Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, we're going to be building a data structure called Quadtree from scratch. So what is a Quadtree and why do I want to do this tutorial? So I recently found this talented generative artist, Chris Barber, who has an amazing Instagram account called code underscore RGB, which I encourage you to check it out. But when I was going through his post, I was so amazed by this particular piece called Adrift, which is off of flocking simulations with 10,000 voids. And at first I thought that the rectangular pattern that you see here is a part of his design, which it might be, I'm not entirely sure. But I quickly learned that it is also a type of a data structure called a quadtree, which I think is his secret sauce for making this run with 10,000 voids. He's not actually using P5.js for this particular piece, but using a different framework called Open Frameworks, which uses C++. But I think there's a lot that we can learn by building this quadtree and how it can make a program run faster. So this tutorial is actually a two-part series. In this video, we're going to learn what a quadtree is, and then we're going to build this data structure from scratch. And at the end, we're going to use this data structure to run a simple collection detection between a bunch of particles. And then in the second part of this series, we're going to actually be building the flocking simulations with a thousand or 1500 voids, similar to the one that Chris does in his piece Adrift. And if you like this data structure, I also encourage you to check out Dan's tutorials. And it is a three-part series where he goes through what a quadtree is and how to build it from scratch as well. So now that we get the why out of the way, let's look at what is a quadtree. So a quadtree is actually like a special kind of map that helps you find things quickly in a big space. Imagine you have a big square piece of paper. Let's call it a boundary. And this boundary represents this entire space. And then we're going to insert a point onto this two-dimensional space. And if there are too many points, or if the number of points exceed the capacity which we can set, then we subdivide the square into four smaller squares. Then we continue to insert points into the space. And if one of these smaller squares also has too many points, we subdivide it again into four even smaller squares. And this is where recursion comes in. So recursion is a concept where you call the function within itself, and we will be doing this a few times, including this step. We keep dividing the squares into smaller and smaller squares until each one has a few points or no points at all. Now, this is why we can find things quickly using a quad tree. When you need to find a point or check which points are close to a certain area, we call that a range, you need to search only in a smaller square where the point or the points should be. This makes searching much faster than looking through every single point in the entire 2D space. And with a quad tree, we're dealing with a two-dimensional space, but there are actually different other types of trees, a higher order tree, for example, an oak tree, which uses the same concept, but instead of finding things in a 2D space, it deals with a 3D space. All right, so now that you understand what a quad tree is, let's look at how we can do it with code. We're going to start by creating a new JavaScript file, and I'm going to call it quadtree.js. Come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, and then click create file quadtree.js. All right, and before we can start writing in here, let's reference the file, go to index.html, and then copy this line of code. Change the name of the file to quadtree.js. All right, so now we can start writing this class. So there are actually gonna be a few classes. The first one is going to be called point, and point is basically is the point that we're going to insert into the boundary. So inside the constructor function, it's going to have two things, the x and y coordinate. So x and y, and we're going to set this.x equals to x, and then this.y equals to y. And then the second class that we're going to write, I'm going to call it rect for rectangle. And this is basically a class that we're going to use to create the boundary. And inside the constructor function, we're going to provide four parameters x, y, and then w and h for the width and the height. So this.x equals to x, this.y equals to y, this.w equals to w, and this.h equals to h. So this class, we're going to use it to create the boundary as well as the range, if we want the range to be in the rectangular shape. All right, then now let's start writing 
the quad tree class. So inside the constructor function here, there are three key things that we need in here. The first one is the boundary itself, which we're going to set to a parameter boundary. And then the second one is actually capacity, which is the number of points that we can have in a particular boundary. So this capacity will also be set to capacity. All right, and then the third one is actually an array called points. And this is going to be an array that we're going to keep track of all the points in that particular boundary. All right, and then there are going to be three main methods inside the quad tree class. The first one is insert, which is going to allow us to insert a point into the boundary. The second one is we're going to call it subdivide, which is where we subdivide the square into smaller squares. And then the third one is query, which is the function or the method we use for finding a point in a particular range. And actually, I'm going to put in the last one display so that we can actually visualize it on our sketch. All right, so let's start with insert. The insert method here, we need a parameter called point because we're inserting a point, right? So to be able to insert a point to the boundary, we need to first check if the point is actually in that boundary, right? So we're going to write a conditional statement that says if, if what? If the boundary, which is this dot boundary dot contains, contains what? Contains the point. Then we want to return true or else return false. But actually we only want it to return false and we need to change this to not. Like the exclamation mark here says that if this boundary does not contain this point, we just don't insert the point into that boundary. And now we need to write the contains method here inside the rect function. So contains point. So for a space to contain this point, we need to check if the point is inside that space. So we're going to write a conditional statement that says if point dot x is greater or equals to this dot x plus this dot w. So this rectangular space is going to have an x and y coordinate in the middle of the rectangle. And the width that you see here is actually just half of the entire width, right? So if point dot x is greater or equals to this dot x plus this dot w, then actually, no, we just need to keep going. And point dot x is less than this dot x minus this dot w. Oops, no, actually, it has to be greater than the left side, right? And then this is the right size. And then point dot y is greater or equals to this dot y minus this dot h and point dot y is less than this dot y plus this dot h. Then you want it to return true, else return false. All right. Now, before we move forward, let's just write in the display method here, rect, and we're going to draw this dot boundary dot x, this dot boundary dot y. And as I mentioned earlier, the width, it has to be this dot boundary dot width times two, and then this dot boundary dot h times two. So before we continue, I'm actually going to go back to sketch.js here, and I'm going to create the quad tree. So quad tree, and then we want to also set boundary and capacity. I'm actually going to set capacity to one. We only just want one point in each of the boundary before we subdivide. And so the boundary will be a new rectangle or the rect class, rect object, right? It is going to have an X and Y coordinate in the middle of the canvas. So width divided by two and height divided by two. 
And then for the width and the height, it is going to be width divided by two and also height divided by two as well because we want 200 by 200. So that when we draw it out, it will be 400 by 400, right? Because this is only this half. All right, and then next, we're going to create the quad tree object. So quad tree equals to new quad tree class. And then the first argument is going to be the boundary, which we already set here. And then the second argument is the capacity, which is one. And then inside draw, actually, let's also print out what quad tree is. All right, so we have the boundary, which is a rectangle at x, y, w, and h as follows. There's nothing here because we have not inserted any points yet. So now inside draw, let's just do quad tree dot display. All right, so we need to fix two things. First, we want the rect mode to be center. We want the x and y coordinate to be at the center of the boundary instead of at the top left corner. And I actually want it to be no fill with the stroke of the color black. All right. Next, we're going to insert a point inside this boundary. So let's go to this insert method and say, if, if what, this dot points dot length. So if the number of points inside the points array is less than the capacity, then we can insert into this array. So this dot points dot push, and we want to push in this point, right? And else, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Before we go there, let's draw out the points. Use a for loop to go through the points array. And I'm going to draw it using an ellipse function. Provide the x and y argument, which is going to be this dot points of i dot x, this dot points of i dot y, and then let's give it a size of 10. How about that? Let's do no stroke and let's color it. How about red? Okay, and then now we go back to sketch.js and we're going to um, create a point. So let P be a new point at, how about we just do a random location, random width and random height. And let's print it out. Oh, we need to also insert it. Um, okay, so quad, quad tree dot insert P. All right, so now we have this one point. All right, but let's do two points. So let's do, actually first, let's create a variable called num, set it to two, and we're gonna write a for loop that goes from let i equals zero to i less than num, i plus plus, and then let's put all of this inside here. And now we're creating two random points, right? And you only see one. Why do you only see one? And that is because the capacity is one. So if you go back and look at the quad tree, the insert method here. So if it's less than the capacity, then we insert the point into the points array, but else, then what do we want to do? We want to first check if we have already divided this boundary. So we actually need to create another Boolean variable. Let's call it divided. We're going to set it to false first. So it has not yet been divided. But so if it's not yet divided, then we want to subdivide the boundary. So we are going to call subdivide. So we're going to call this function here. So we're going to subdivide this boundary into four smaller quadrants or four smaller squares. And there are different conventions of how you want to call these squares. And the way that I'm going to call it is this one is going to be northeast, northwest, 
southwest and southeast. So let's start with the northeast quadrant. So the northeast quadrant is basically a new quad tree, right? Which has its own boundary and such and such. So new quad tree, and it's going to have boundary and capacity, right? So the capacity, we're going to set it as the same capacity as the bigger boundary, but the boundary of this smaller quadrant is going to be this one here, which is going to have the x and y coordinates at the x coordinate of the big boundary plus width divided by two and y minus height divided by two, right? So we're going to call this let north east boundary is going to be a new rectangle. And we can put it as this dot boundary dot x plus this dot boundary dot w divided by two. But this is going to be very long. We need to do it for all four quadrants. So what we're going to do is we're going to set four variables, x, y, w, and h, and set it to this dot boundary dot x. Let y equals to this dot boundary dot y. Let w equals to this dot boundary dot w. And let h equals to this dot boundary dot h. And with this, we can just set it to x plus w divided by 2, and then y minus, right, minus height divided by 2, and then the size would be width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. All right, and we're going to put in north, east boundary here, and this dot capacity. Okay, all right, I'm going to move this out for now. Okay, and we're going to do it four times. So the second one is going to be northwest. So northwest is going to be this side, right? So x minus width divided by 2. The y direction is the same. And let's copy this and put it here. All right, and then south east is here. So plus plus. I need to make sure that I get all of this right so that I don't get any bucks later on. All right, so south east here. One, two, all right, and then north, no, southwest. Southwest. And for southwest, it will be negative, right? Yeah, and positive, negative and positive. So plus, minus, plus, minus, 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 plus, plus. And then once we subdivide, then this dot divided will be true. All right. And then inside here, once we divide it, then we want to continue with conditional statements that says if this dot northeast dot insert and as you can see here we're doing a recursive function right we insert we call insert inside insert <laughs> basically so we're going to recursively insert a point inside a smaller quadrant if that boundary is divided. So we want to insert a point. And so if we can insert a point, then we just return true. Also, we are going to return true here too. So once we return true, then we're done with inserting. If not, then we just keep inserting points inside more and more quadrants. And then else if this dot north west dot insert of point then return true. We're going to do it two more times. If this dot south east dot insert of point, then return true. And the last one is else if this dot south west dot insert of point, then return true. 
And then outside of everything, we're just going to write, um, let's see. All right, here, return false, just in case nothing returns true, then we'd return false. All right, let's try this before we move forward. So let's click run. Hmm. Ah, okay, we only see one point here, but you can see that it's been divided and there are actually two points, I think. So there's one point in the big boundary and then in the northeast, no point. Northwest, there's a point here. All right, so we need to go to what? We need to go to display. And basically, right, if this dot divided, then we want to display each of the points and also the boundary of that subdivided square. So we're going to do this dot northeast dot display, right? And we're going to do it four times. Northwest, southeast, southwest. All right. Did you see that? Let me show you. <laughs> Come on. Ah, okay, here. So you can see that, hey Pat, I thought that the capacity is one. Why are there two points in this space? And that is because actually one point is in the big boundary and then the another point is in the smaller boundary so if you look here one point is in the big boundary and then another point is in the what is it southeast yeah so there's a point here so the approach that i'm doing here is that i allow it to have more than the number of points in the capacity based on that particular boundary. But I think that's okay. The maximum that it can have is actually just two based on the capacity of one. All right, so if I go back here and I don't think I need to print this anymore. And then let's change this to, let's do about 50. Ta -da! And as you increase the capacity here, you can see that it's not divided as much, right? Because the number of points in each boundary is higher. So, ta-da! So now let's go to the last step, which is query, where we're going to find the points in a specific range. Inside query here, we need two parameters. The first one is the range, which is the specific area that we need to check if the points are in there. Then the second one, we're gonna call it found. And found is going to be the array that we're going to add the points that are actually in that specific range. So first, we need to check if the points are in that range. So we're going to write a conditional statement that says if range dot intersects this dot boundary. And similar to when we did the contains function or when we call that, first I'm going to check if the points are not actually in this range, then we can just return false. So let's go and write the intersect function. So we're gonna write it inside the rect class here, intersect. And then as a perimeter, we're going to provide boundary. I actually have a video on collision detection where I go through collisions between circle to circle, circle to rectangle, and rectangle to rectangle. So you can check those out if you want to get a better understanding. But in this one, we're going to write rectangle to rectangle, right? Because it's going to be a range that is of the rectangular shape and the boundary is also of a rectangular shape. So first I'm going to create four variables and these are going to be the four sides of the boundary. So let's do boundary r equals to boundary.x plus boundary.w. Let boundary l for the left side equals to boundary.x minus boundary.w. And then let 
boundary t for the top side so boundary dot y minus boundary dot h and then the last side is boundary b for bottom for boundary dot y plus boundary dot plus boundary dot h all right so i'm going to do the exact same thing for the rectangle right so what if we call it range range r range l range t and range b but this is going to be this dot right this dot this dot this dot this dot this dot this dot and this dot all right so now we need to check four things so if boundary r is greater than or equals to range l and boundary l is less than or equals to range r and boundary t is less than or equals to range b and boundary b is greater than or equals to range t so if all of these conditions are true we know that the two rectangles overlap so we are going to return true else we're going to return false all right so now we have the intersects method now we can come back to query so if it's not within this range return false we don't need to check this particular area else we want to go through all the points inside the points array by less than this dot points dot length i plus plus then we want to see if the range contains that point or not right which is different from the intersect this one we want to see if the range is inside the boundary which is the the square the rectangle that we subdivide or not subdivide right but then once we have that we want to see if there are points inside that range so we're gonna call the conditional statement if range dot contains point so it has to be this dot points of i actually then we're going to add it to this found array all right so this is for the biggest boundary now we want to write another conditional statement that says if this boundary is divided if this dot divided is true then we want to call query again on all of the four smaller quadrants so this dot northeast dot query and then we're going to put in range same range right and we're going to add it to the same found array and let's do it four times for northeast northwest southeast and south west and then after that we're going to basically just return this found array and i also want to print this found array just to show you what are the points inside the range all right so let's go back to sketch now inside draw we're going to first create a range and it's going to be a new rectangle so how about we put it at where the mouse x and mouse y is and then let's give it a width and a height which is going to be the half of the size right so let's do 40 by 40 and then we're going to do quad tree dot query range and then found which i'm actually going to call it found points and this is going to be a new array that i set found points here all right so before we click run let's also visualize this range so we're going to draw a rectangle at range.x range.y range.w times 2 and range.h times 2 let's give it no fill and a stroke of a color green 
Alright. Mm. Range it intersect is not a function. Intersects. Yay. Okay. Oh. Why did it run so slow? Okay, I'm actually going to, let's see, let's do just 10 points. And let's click run again. Okay, it, I think it was just too many points with the print function. So as you can see, one point, one point, oh, four points, one point, four points. Okay, something's wrong. Eight points. Yep, something's wrong. All right, let's go back to quad tree. A few moments later. Ah, I think I know what I did wrong. So this if statement here should not actually be inside the for loop. I think let's try it. One point, two points, two points, one point. Yay, okay, I think that's it. All right, so I'm going to delete this. And actually, I want to visualize it outside of this quad tree function. So let's just actually draw out the points here. So once we found the points, then we're going to loop through that array. Found points of dot length. I plus plus and then ellipse of found points of i dot x found points of i dot y and then we'll do 10 by 10 and actually we are going to want it to be on top of this display function so that we can actually see it and let's do no stroke and let's give it a color yellow all right okay so that is pretty much the basics of this quad tree structure but before we start to do the collision detection I want to also make a different shape of a range right now we just have rectangle so let's try a circle now inside here let's do it on top of this class let's do class circle and inside the constructor function instead of having x y width and height we're going to do x y and r for radius so this dot x equals to x this dot y equals to y this dot r equals to r and we will need two methods here right so contains and intersect so let's start with contains so contains will be a circle containing a point so we're going to check if the x and y coordinates of the point is inside the circle and we can do that by checking if the distance between the point x and point y is actually less than the radius so let this x equals to so i can actually use the dist function which is the built-in function within p5 to calculate the distance between two points but i'm actually going to write it out using the math method within javascript so that if you want to use this file to do things outside of p5 you can just do it All right so dist x equals to math of absolute value because it could be a negative number and we're going to find the distance between the two points so this dot x minus point dot x and we're going to do the same thing for y so math dot abs this dot y minus point dot y and then to find the distance between these two points the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared right so this is a and this is b so let's start with power so power of this x2 so this is 
this x square plus math.power of this y square. Then we want to do a square root of this whole thing. So math.sqrt of this. All right. So it's not constants, it contains. And now, whoops, we just need to, what? We need to check if this stance is less than or equal to this dot r, right? Then return true and else, then return false, please. Now we need the last method called intersects. All right, so we're gonna intersect between a circle and a rectangle. So we're gonna put in boundary, which is the same thing as what we put inside here, right? And now how we find out if a circle and a rectangle intersect is that first we need to figure out if the rectangle is actually on the right side or the left side or the top or the bottom of the circle. So we're going to declare two variable, let's call it close x and close y. So this is like the closest side, right? And actually we're going to initialize this as the location of this dot x and this dot y. And then we're gonna write a conditional statement that said if this dot x is less than this dot boundary dot x minus this dot boundary dot W, meaning that if this dot x, which is the location of a circle, is less than the left side, right, then we know that the closest side is the left side. The closest side of the rectangle is equals to this dot boundary dot x minus this dot boundary dot w. And else, then the circle is closest to the right side. So we're going to set it to this dot boundary dot x plus this dot boundary dot w. And we're going to do the same thing for the left side. I mean the the y direction. So if this dot y is greater than this dot boundary dot y boundary dot y plus this dot boundary dot h then close y is equals to this, right? And then else close y is equals to that. Actually, instead of doing else, we're going to explicitly say else if close x is greater than maybe doing just with else might be okay but just making sure that there's no error i'm just gonna do if this dot y is less than the top here all right so now we know which side is the closest side already then we're gonna set this x and this y similar to how we do it here so actually maybe i can just copy this So now we want to check instead of point x here, it will be close x, and then this will be close y. And this should stay the same. And then for the conditional statement now, so we just have to say if, if what? If distance is less than or equals to this dot r, then return true, else return false. Okay, so this part is similar to what we have here, right? But it's just that we just need to find which side is the closest side so that we can actually calculate the distance correctly. Okay, now let's go back to sketch.js. I'm going to comment out this range and copy and paste. <laughs> Change this to circle and we just need radius of 40 and instead of w and h here we set it to r and run nope reading x 
of undefined. But I already defined it here. This dot. Oh, so it's not this dot. It's this boundary. <laughs> this is the first time that I add this dot when I do not need to add this dot. A few moments later. Boundary, boundary, boundary. Run. Oh, and we also need to change the drawing function here to an ellipse. Yay. Okay, now what if we increase this to 100? And this is how you can use a quadri structure to keep track of all the points and also to find the points that we want to evaluate. Now let's go to the last part. We're going to create a particle systems that collides with each other. And then we're going to use a quadri to make sure that it can run fast. How about we start with creating a new JavaScript file. Let's call it particle.js. And we need to reference the file. And now we're going to write a particle class inside the constructor function. We're going to have an x and y location. This dot x equals to x, this dot y equals to y. And then let's do vx and vy for the velocity or speed and direction of how this particle is going to move. Actually, let's set it to a random value between, how about, negative 2 and 2. And we're going to do the same for the y direction. And then also, it's going to be of a shape circle. So let's do radius equals to 10. Let's do 5. Let's do it. It's a little bit smaller. And let's just display it. It's going to be an ellipse. And it's going to be at this dot x, this dot y, this dot r times 2, and this dot r times 2. And what color should it be? Let it be just black and no stroke. All right. So I'm actually putting it inside this same thing. So inside sketch here, we need to comment out. Let's just comment out everything. For now and we can insert it back after all right so let's just comment these out too let's start with particles as an array and let's set num to be let's start with 10 and then inside here we're going to use a for loop to create a bunch of particles right 10 to be exact so particles of i will be a new particle at random width. How will we just do random width and random height? OK. And then inside draw, we're going to use a for loop again. And we just do particles of i dot display. OK, now we have. 10 particles. Now let's make it move. So let's call update. Inside update, we're basically going to increment x, this dot x by this dot vx, this dot y by this dot vy. And I'm actually going to write check edges function to make sure that it bounces off the borders. So we just need to write a conditional statement. Let's say if this dot x is greater than width or this dot x is less than zero, then we want to change the direction of this dot vx. So times equals negative one. Same thing on the y side height or this dot y. So I have a bouncing ball sketch that does exactly this. So if you don't know what I'm doing right now, you can check that one out as well. And then now we're going to check the edges before we increment these positions. So let's do this dot check edges. And we're going to call update in here. 
before we display it. So particles of i dot update. All right. Okay. And then now we're going to print out what the frame rate is. Around 60 frames per second, still fine, right? Still fine because we only have 10. How about we put a thousand in? Still fine too. And that is because we have not checked any collision detection. We haven't done any, we haven't done any collision detection between these particles. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to particle.js and then we're gonna write a function. Let's call it particle collides and the parameter is going to be another particle right so how do we check if the two particles hit each other so each of the particle are of two circles right this time though i'm going to use the dist method within p5.js so let's do let distance to be equals to dist and this takes in a total of four arguments. To check the distance between two points, you just provide the x and y coordinate of those two points. So we need this dot x, this dot y, which is the first particle. And then the second one is going to be particle dot x and particle dot y. And if that distance is less than or equals to the two radii of the two particles, so this dot r plus this no particle dot r then you want to return true and then else you return false and then i'm actually going to create another boolean variable let's call it is collided set it to false at first then inside display here we're going to write a conditional statement that said if this dot collided so if it is colliding with another particle let's color it how about actually let's do what color let's do a nice i don't know what this color is maybe magenta or blueish and then else let's keep it boring as black <laughs> all right so we're gonna go back to sketch.js and then what we're gonna do is that Let's not crash our program. So let's start with 10. And then I'm going to comment out the frame rate for now as well. We're going to write a for loop. Let's say for let i equals to 0, i less than, actually, there's just two particles dot length, i plus plus. And then we're going to loop through not just all the particles, we need to check all the other particles so we need a double for loop right so let j equals to zero to j less than particles dot length j plus plus and as you can see why this is going to run really slow because you need to check if each of the particles collides with all of the other particles so we're going to do particles of i actually we need to first write a conditional statement that says if the particle that we're checking if particles.i is not equals to particles.j right we don't want it to be the same one and then now we're going to call the colliding function right so we call it particle actually so what, what do we call it particle collides particle okay let's just copy this but we need particles of i dot particle collides actually why don't we just call it collides particles of j then what do we want to do we want to set particles of i dot collided to be true and i need to change this to collides and yep let's try it Oh, okay, it turns to this nice, is this magenta? I think this is magenta. But as you can see, once it collides and it turns true, collided turns true, 
that it never goes back to black. So in this loop here, up top here, we want to set it back to false. All right. So it only turns magenta when it collides. Okay, and the frame rate is 60 ECPC. But all right, let's let's save it first. <laughs> let's do 100. Let's start small. Okay, 60. Still okay. All right, let's go big. <laughs> 4.6 okay and this is exactly why we want to use a quad tree all right so now i'm going to uncomment all of this so we don't need num here we have this num so inside here inside setup we want to create particles inside the particle arrays here and then we're going to create the boundary and the quad tree inside setup but we're actually going to insert the points inside draw we want to keep inserting a, a point because the position of each of the particles change over time basically every time the draw loop function is called right so we want to update the points but if we just do this basically we're inserting points over and over and over again but we never actually clear the the quad tree or like the points inside the points array inside the quad tree so that's what we want to do so you can actually do it two ways you can actually create the quad tree every single time the draw loop function is called or you can just clear the board basically so that's what i'm gonna do so if i go to quadtree.js here and then inside quad tree here let's just do clear quad tree and basically i just want to set these two things back right so this is a little bit redundant and might be not the most efficient way to do it but it still is going to be faster than not using a quad tree at all so i encourage you if you want to make it more efficient to see how you can do that but this is how we're going to implement it in this tutorial all right so now we first want to start by calling clear quad tree all right and now here we're basically creating the points randomly right but we already have created these particles here so we just have to do particles of i dot x and particles of i dot y but also we want to know which particle this is as in like we want to have all the properties that are inside that particle to be part of this point here so we're going to create a third argument here which is going to be particles of i and let's go back to point to quadri.js then inside the point class we're going to write the third parameter call user data and we're going to set this dot user data to user data so you can actually do it a different way you can actually instead of doing points here have this as a particle class but by doing it this way this quadtree.js file is more generic and you can apply it to the other types of things that you want to work with this quadtree all right so now if we go back to sketch here what do we need now all right so we basically have this double loop here right so we can actually combine it so delete this so now we created a point p put it inside the quad tree and then we display the particles and now instead of calling all of the particles on the particles the collision detection we're going to set a range so now inside the first for loop we're going to 
basically create a range but instead of creating it based on the mouse the range is going to be each of the size of the particle itself so let range be equals to new circle and x y and r will be particles of i dot x particles of i dot y and particles of i dot r and then we want to do quad tree dot query right range and we need found points right we need the array found points equals to this and then now instead of going through the whole particles dot length we just do found points dot length and now we want to check this conditional statement that is based on the particles but not actually the x and y location so basically we're gonna do let p to be equals to particles dot of j and so if particles of i is not p and particles of i dot collide of p is true then we check this right and let me just quickly check if we need to color anything i think i should turn magenta already all right let's try it mm, no the frame rate is at 60 frames per second <laughs> Oh, kind of works, but doesn't work. Let's see what's wrong. Ah, it has to be particles of J dot user data. We actually want to pull out that particle itself. I think that is what's wrong. Reading X. I think it doesn't actually give the particles of J. Oh, found points. Found points. Ta da! All right. So now is the moment. Let's do a thousand. 60 frames per second. Okay, are you ready? Should we try 1500? <laughs> Not bad, still at 60. Wow. Okay, so um, I want to, before we end here, I want to visualize the quadri itself. So let radius to be close to, let's do three. Let's make it smaller. Let's click run first. Okay, and then now we're going to display the quad tree. So we just need to quad tree dot display run. <laughs> okay, we don't need the, the red dots. We don't need these. All right. So here you go. This is a Quatri implementation. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you like this, we're going to have the second part that is coming out soon. And it might already be out when you watch this video. So let's go.